In this video, we'll be talking about how to make shading and coloring easier by breaking down complex shape. This will be a learning session from What's a Pokemon through Discord screen share. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, wait, could, could you, could you, how to say, I start from the beginning on like the introduction of how this, how, how this is going to work and how this is going to help, uh, like what this does and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, when you're painting, you to get your lighting consistent, you kind of want to break more complex shapes into simple shapes, um, because that will help you with your shading uh, quite a lot. Instead of you know having a uh, thinking of a character or of an object as like a complex form, you can break like every single uh, piece of the character into very simple shapes generally. And that at least helps you with the sort of the, the, the basics of that shading. If you know how to uh, shade a cylinder, which is a very, very simple shape, you know how to shade an arm or like, you know, a leg. Because they're, they're, they're not exactly cylinders, they're, but they're pretty close. You can use, just use the same principles. Uh, actually, I think that, that I also had this sort of problem when a lot of times when people are just starting off, right? When people don't really have like a sense of form, right? Yeah. Um, and it can help when you're lost, if you don't know how to, yeah, if you don't know where to begin, everything can, almost everything can be solved just by breaking your problem down into a simpler form. So it is useful for beginners, but I think even for somebody more advanced and, you know, in the intermediate or very advanced level of art, it can be a very useful tool to just break things down rather than to work on, from a very complex, uh, base point right right now in terms of like just breaking down in breaking things down to simple shapes like how would you uh say to go about things uh, like a any example would you like would you say it's more applicable or some good example that you can show that how this sh this works in action well i think it's um very useful when shading uh when shading characters uh, because uh, characters and living creatures are very, very complex shapes. There's a lot of very small details, and it's very hard to think about, um, you know, think about what the form is that, you know, what the form of these characters is. So it would help to break it down. Like if you have a character's head, you know that it's a sphere. Um, you can shade most of it like a sphere. Uh, on a pony head, you ha also have the snout, which sticks out, and that's kind of like. Um, it's kind of like a sort of a weird shaped cube, if you know what I mean. So you can break a pony head down into a sphere and a rough cube shape. And just breaking it down into those two shapes, you get almost the entire form. And so if you know how to shade a sphere and you know how to shade a cube, then you know how to shade a pony head. And all of this shading is usually, I mean, like, uh, it's usually something that you learn early on if you're trying to like draw anything like learn how to, how to shade a cube, a sphere, like those kind of simple shapes is usually, are usually like in our head already. And if not, uh, just, I believe like, uh, it's something that you taught, that you told me earlier, like before this, where you said that just uh, draw or shade them, like color and shading things in like solid colors only, right? Yes. Um, yeah, generally when I uh, shade, I like to put down sort of a very rough first layer uh, uh, it doesn't even look, it doesn't look blended. It's not soft. Even if you're doing soft shading, I think you should start from doing very rough colors rather than, you know, trying to blend as you go. Um, because then you'll know, you'll be able to keep the shadows consistent because you're working with you know, very rough colors. And so you don't need to keep picking colors all the time. You're just working from, um, you know, basic shades. Uh, it also minimizes mistakes, correct? Yes, definitely. It helps you see mistakes because uh, there's less detail. If you see, if you if you see a mistake later on, it, it just becomes harder to manage because you're already that much into it that you you can't really do much about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and generally, the more time you spend on something, the less you want to go back and change it because you think, oh, I've already spent so much time on this part, I don't want to change it. But sometimes that's kind of what you need to do. And that's a lot easier when you've spent less time on it, when you've, you, when you've done um, less work, because it's just a very rough start. Once you have the rough part looking good, then you can add more detail and you can refine it and you can render it and make things really nice. 
so uh, anything specific that you can actually like teach the sort of like uh, some sort of like step by step or whatever that you, you do well, I, I think I think I think a lot of people don't necessarily know how to uh, shade these basic shapes um, too well. Like maybe they have uh, they don't realize that if you're really good at shading very basic shapes, then that knowledge is transferable to shading, you know, over an overall character. Like when you're shading a sphere, for example, um, which is very common in a lot of places, actually. Yeah, like like if you really if you really look into it, like it, spheres are really common in character because I mean like because like everything's head is basically based on the sphere, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, in in organic creatures, there's a lot of very round parts. There's there's almost no straight lines in a in a, a living creature. It's it's very rare to actually see a straight line or like any any yeah any straight lines on characters. And I believe, like, uh, someone, like, pointed this out to me. Or oh, not pointed out, like, I saw a few videos and stuff where they show uh, you sort of break things down in, like, multiple surfaces, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Like, you just, uh, you don't assume the sphere as, like, a sphere, just one surface. You break it down, like, into eight surfaces like that. So do you do those, do you mean, do you mean that, or do people also do that? No, I know what you mean. Um, not for a sphere. Like a sphere is kind of one surface which you shade in a sort of specific way. But for a head, um, that is absolutely something you do. You want to sort of work out which parts are facing in different directions. Like this head here. Um, like you have the whole side of the head, which is like this area. And that's all facing in roughly the same direction. And then you have the front of the face, which is like... Um, you know, it's the space between the eyes, and it's like the top of the, the top of the muzzle, uh, and that's its own plane. And then on the other side, you have um, you know the far side of the face where the other eye is, and like that's where the, the cheeks are. And then you have the front of the the front of the muzzle here, and that's its own plane. And so you can divide it into planes like that. So, how many planes would you recommend actually per shape, per simple shape? Uh, well, it's kind of like a cube, really. Like you have, uh, you have ones facing the light source, or and you have ones that are facing, you know, directly uh, parallel to the light source. You have ones facing directly away from the light source. I mean, it, it sort of depends on on uh, the complexity of the shading that you're doing. Like, I, I think you should start off by doing sort of rough planes, but. As you add more detail, you're just doing this as sort of a guideline. It's kind of like a sketch, but for painting. Um, so like on this, you have the near plane. If I have a light coming from this direction, then I have the plane which is, di which is directly facing the light there. And I have um, a plane which is sort of perpendicular to the light. And this one is also perpendicular, but it's you know, at a sort of different angle to this part here. And then I have um, d d uh, the plane which is facing away from the light. And um, once you break the shape down like that, you can sort of, it's very easy to visualize which parts should be in light and which parts should be in shadow, which parts should, you know, should be lighter and darker. So, so, so for example, with this plane here, this yellow one, I know that pretty much it will be entirely lit. Um, there will be, you know, and there'll be uh, this, this lighter blue one, this uh, cyan color that, that will be sort of, there'll be a little bit of shading, it'll be, it might be a little bit darker. And then on this other side, it'll be, you know, very dark because there's not very much light hitting it. And there might be reflected light coming from, that's bouncing off the ground or off the environment or off the character itself and hitting sort of from this direction, but there won't be too much. Oh. Uh, you, most of the time you can worry about that at the end because like, uh, those kind of like reflected reflected light only really show their true usefulness at like the later portion of the painting. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's more of a um, yeah, a sort of a final detail thing. You want to get the main light dealt with, and then from there you can add reflected light and other things like that. That's generally the process most people use. So if I use this palette here, I can sort of use this as a rough guideline. So I know that this part is going to be roughly all in the light here. So it's going to be my a lighter tone. And this can be a little bit darker. Might, I might not even keep it that dark, but good guideline, I suppose. 
that part's going to be a little bit darker and then I can sort of work from there and stuff is stuff is already starting to look like something oh. yeah I can start doing a little bit of uh, blending to to um, you know show that there's a little bit of a curve rather than things being flat planes and I can even start maybe doing some highlights on this side where the light is hitting it directly, you know, blending a little bit more. Maybe do start doing a little bit of reflected light. It's starting to take shape. Like this part, I might I think is might be a little bit further away from the light than um, playing in the middle here. You know, you can already start to see it's sort of taking on a bit of a th more three D feel. So the, so that's basically how, how how it works. How like shading from rough uh just rough planes into uh, a shape showing off yeah yeah breaking it down into those into those sort of basic shapes sort of helps you figure out it, it works with everything so uh i believe that's pretty much it correct yeah i think so so do you have anything else that you want to add like some small pointers that you think may be help may be helpful in doing this or something that people might forget easily um I think one thing I see a lot is that people add too much shadow where there sh shouldn't necessarily be shadow and they don't use colors that are dark enough as well in places that uh, shadow is supposed to be. So like some people might add shadows over on this side just because they feel like a shadow might exist over here, but you know, there's not really going to be shadow there because you know, all the light is coming from this way, you know, what is causing this shadow here. It might be a thin one, but yeah, you wouldn't really see much of a shadow. So the whole uh, adding shadow, sorry, uh, not deep enough shadow would, would probably be fixed if you were to uh, make your color palette beforehand because you already, you're already you already sure that this is the correct color and you won't really mess up because you're not adding colors that you didn't already put into consideration, right? Yeah, that definitely helps. Having a, a palette where you can figure out what is the darkest shadow um, for this particular tone you want in your scene, that definitely helps you keep things consistent. So that's pretty much it, I believe, right? I think so. Yeah, well, I guess I have to say thank you for this uh, another lesson that you've taught me. Unfortunately, the last lesson was not able to be recorded. Tech problems, huh? Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. That's okay. I hope this video has been helpful. If it did help, maybe consider sharing it to a friend who might benefit from it. Like if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it, and comment down below on why. And while you're at it, feel free to comment on what you want to see in the future. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more future content like this. You can check out my other video on the screen right now and the end card. And as always, happy drawing.